starting from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to Markets Tomorrow, the daily market analysis show where we look at what happened during the day in the market, stock market, and how we can plan for a better trade for the next day. So this is analysis from May 10th, Tuesday, 2022. So we had you know, a very high volatile sliding market. You know, that's what is happening. You know, it's bearish. Let's get to see in the details of you know, what exactly does the chart show. For that, the pre market analysis for tomorrow, Tuesday, May 10th, is based on all these parameters. You know, we, we look at each of those and then we'll have some actionables and we'll have a market view. I'll have, you know, I'll, I'll state my market view and you, know, you may agree or disagree with that, but there will be also some actionables and then you know, that view in the market would be based on all the parameters that you see. Right? Let's get ahead and see. So this is the daily charts, right? This is the daily analysis that you're doing. So we have a green now because you know, we gap down and then closed above it, right? But actually, we we have further lost, you know, uh, lost points. Um, but we managed to recover some of it, right? Remember, we have a, formed a very big gap resistance there, clearly visible. The gap. It could be a big hurdle to climb over that about 16700 that levels right same with the the 35500 kind of levels we have a gap that's formed there and it is going to be a hurdle to climb back there gaps are always powerful resistances and supports most of the time right so that's what we have so we these are all sub previous supports so no no support zones from where the breakout has happened so so when the price is settling at a support zone which was previously a resistance and they have always a probability not a confirmed on probability of a change in volatility that is possible it could take a you know bottom out there and then bounce that's always the change in volatility uh, as long as it is residing so here also you can see that it's residing at a previous uh, you know support zone right here also and you also see this so that that cannot be so a bounce from here cannot be rolled out right but overall we we have clear visibility that it's a you no know, trending, you no know, sliding down move that is what is happening, right? So here we have a flag breakout that happened, did not sustain, formed an HNS and a double top pattern here, and then it lost the neckline and then reached and fall back into the trend line, and now it is trending down to this through the same trend line to make a swing low, new swing low probably potentially, right? So that's what is happening right? and, and uh, you know, there's a big gap down move that happened to, to you know uh, day before yesterday on both indices right and uh, same same thing can be seen in the bank Nifty also we have lost all the moving average supported confluences you know? we have lost all of them on both indices and in bank Nifty also we can see has head and shoulder breakdown neckline in double top breakout breakdown and almost it has reached the target also normally the head and shoulder the, the highest head part no? what is the width of that would be the downside move so the target is almost achieved so it is at a support zone that's why you're seeing some kind of consolidation and uh, but remember that there is also a possibility that you can it can make a new swing high so whether it's going to make a new swing high you know would be the decisive thing that's going to happen now right is it going to correct below the 70 15 five no six seven hundred kind of levels is going to dip below that and make a new high that means it could trace more for them or is it is it done with this interim correction and then it's moving out that's what we have to watch out right because it's it's now it is a good support zone on the bank nifty at least nifty it still has a possibility of going towards the little more towards the 5900 kind of levels right that's the intraday price action that you see here very highly volatile day it was a gap down it's kind of a w pattern you can say almost multiple v's are there you can see them no it's a one and a half percent that's down move, then a full recovery of one and a half percent, and then another one percent down, then another one percent up. So it was zigzag, choppy, high volatile market, very difficult to trade intraday, right? That's the same thing that happened manually also. W shape, V, V shape moves, one and a half percent down, one and a half percent up, one percent down, one percent up. Now again after that it was consolidating by the end of the day. So that's the kind of choppiness that you see in the market. Get to the numbers, we lost Nifty lost 109 points. It's nearly you no know, half a percent, a little more. Bank Nifty lost nearly one percent. 
10 points 10 percent less than point ten percent less than uh, one percent so 300 points lost in magnitude so it was it, it was kind of a slight you know it turned out to be a you know a very volatile recovery that happened and it turned out to be losing less as than what had earlier uh, in the morning what it indicated it was losing 200 and 200 plus kind of points in the nifty but you know a hundred point of record basically same with the bank of also so recovery saved the day but yeah so so just of the things we have seen so price actions and on we, we already heard of that so intraday price action if you, you have seen that it's uh, already seen all in the bands if you see this is how it is clear bearish is indicative when the price is breaking down it is you know spilled out from the bands that's what you call and it is walking over the bands so clear bearish is on the volatility expansion on the, both the bands of both the indices can be clearly seen and the volatility also can be expected because the width from the median from where it broke down is high from where the price is right now so that's why you see this high volatile motion price action basically and um, support resistance level you can see a new gap resistance on the top that is formed uh, day for yesterday and now um, price is taken support today at uh, 16200 levels and then if that breaks down then we can go to the 15900 uh, levels you know, between 15, 850 and 950 that level is Fibonacci 16 retracement level also so below that we have to be careful because Fibonacci 16 will break down last time we managed to break down and then uh, resurrect from there but it may not happen always the second time so basically it is heading towards testing this low of 15 um, 650 that kind of levels right so supports would be 1500 to 15 650 level that's in swing low if that breaks it goes to 15 350 15 450 levels so the resistance in this area that uh, would be a major gap resistance that is there so first resistance would be declared 16 350 to 16 450 which is the Fibonacci 50 level above that you have 16 550 to 16 650 then 16 700 to 750 then 16 800 to 900 which is the Fibonacci 38 then 17000 rounding number above that 17 200 300 17 350 450 then 17 500 600 which is the Fibonacci 23 that's the support resistance there. there's, a, there's another major resistance on the upside also that's the nifty we are talking about bank nifty Similarly, you can see a new gap resistance is from here. So, 35,000. Uh, so, the first resistance will be 34,350 to 34,750. That level where it resisted today also to try, attempted to cl climb above that, but got hit by the resistance and fall down. So, the next resistance will be 35,000, 35,300 Fibonacci 50. So, clearing that is very crucial because there is a gap resistance. So, that above that, you have 35,900 levels, 600, 900, 35, 600, 35, 900 levels. Then above that, 36,300, 36,800, Fibonacci 38 retracement levels. Above that, you have another gap that's starting at 36,900 to 37,000 level. And 37,500 above, Fibonacci 23 retracement would be a major indication that the correction may be over at that time if it all happens, right? That's why the support resistance of the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, making all of these levels to make the entries from the short side or make a and in the long side exit trade all of this is based on the support and resistance level. this is okay. here we have used previous resistances and Fibonacci also you can have the, you know you can use multiple methods you know for games you can you, know, you can use central provers you know you can use uh, swing you know price action patterns you know Fibonacci trade so you can use n number of ways to find support and resistance so I have used Fibonacci and uh, previous resistances also only and gaps Moving to the momentum of the price, you can see that the momentum is in the BR is also the short term on both the indices Nifty and the Bank Nifty. Clear bearish is no divergence as seen as of now, and medium term also medium term is managing uh, the sideways and at the support zone so RSI 40. So we have to keep a close watch, but next week it's going to fall down or not, which indicates it may be a clear bearish as if the momentum drops below 40 on the uh, medium term also. That's what you are right now, it's sideways. So bearishness in the short term trend clear bearishness on short term and medium term right and the strength of that is indicating that it is rising up that means the bearishness is increasing with strength that's the same thing that bank nifty also shows so there is trend volatility is spiking one day up next day down next day again up so today we had up again spiked up 3.7 percent and then it's 22.2 so two points above the crucial 20 20 levels so high willing volatile obviously that's what you saw today's v shape most Implied volatility of the Nifty is saying it is near 22 21.9. Implied volatility of percentile is saying that it is a you no know, percentile is over a period of one year, 
know, 52 weeks and then it shows that it is also a very high volatile if you consider that one day or one year right so that's why you're seeing the markets at uh, you have to be cautious of this level when the VIX is at this level right it's, the sentiment is bad right there's a lot of greed and fear in the back, fear in the market right so you know your position size shut out your position size is the only thing that you can do manage your capital cut short do the risk management put stop losses right? stay away from trade if it is too much volatility that you can handle right of interest uh, analysis is the expiry of uh, weekly expiry of May 12th that's what you're seeing here some unwinding of the put positions can be seen here in the bank but it's too early to you know make sense out of that because it's only a Monday so, you know, so we have three more days for the expiry now open interest levels are 16,000 to 70,000 thousand point range is what the put sellers and the put uh, and the call sellers are seeing right that's what the support instance are seeing highest 15 1000 and 17000 the second level of support, support resistance can be seen put and, sell, right, put and call rating is seen at those levels on the nifty now bank nifty 34000 and 36000 2000 points ranges were the highest put and call rating as of now 33000 and 35000 is the second level of highest put and call rating or the support resistance can be seen now that's a wide range you know uh, very difficult to make much sense out of it but overall you can see that Call writing is where you no, know, it's a bearish graph that you're seeing because highest number of writing is called. Right? That is what dominates it. Higher number of contracts for the options. This is the options operator data levels that you're seeing. Now futures operators is also share you know, of the option uh, of futures operators so build up also today which is showing bearishness. Short build up is what you see both Nifty and the bank Nifty and put call ratio was 0.4. This bottom is today now slight recovery has happened 0.6 and points point 0.6 is what you see for nifty and the bank nifty put pull ratio so it's not bullish at all closer to bearishness rather but cannot say it's at the bottom now moving to the heat map of nifty 50 you can see that the lines are going up things and then market falls but infi and hdfc perform right t perform today g performed because obviously the you know, dollar had spiked up no, and the US currency advantage would be the for the IT. So IT performed, that's only only stock that might have performed a little bit. But Reliance was hold, which is holding the market given up. HDFC managed to move up. That was what uh, the recovery happened on the HDF. So somebody was buying these two beaten down stocks. That's what again happened. Overall sector wise, if you see all the sectors did not perform. And it's a red day except for telecom. Something happened there. Now index heavy wide performance if you see. You can see that it has slipped. HDFC has slipped into the HDFC bank has slipped into the bearish zone, so it remains there, and it is at a critical support zone, so it's almost breached there. So the question is whether it's going to further fall down from here or manage to get in and climb, consolidate this point or not. That's what you already see. HDFC also has slipped its the momentum into the sideways zones. Price has already slipped from the major support zones and then trying to consolidate and uh, has not to slip further down. Lands. Right, all the flag breakout after the cup and handle pattern breakout is over, is done with, and all the gains are lost now. And it's back at a support zone. Now, the question is whether it is further breakdown or not. Because RSI, the momentum RSI is at RSI 40 support levels, so it breach below that would take the lands back to bearish zone, bearish, bearish zones of the momentum on the short term. Right, so something to closely watch out. Right, it's a big index heavy weight that is holding the market all this time. So if selling further interest wise there then we have trouble in forces you can see that clearly there is a green day that has happened it is trying there is a bearish sorry there is a bullish divergence that could take the market that could take the infosys stock trade uh, back to the sideways on from the bearishness possible it's in progress working and you see a green can there but remember that there is a major gap big gap that takes a lot of time and effort to uh, take it away it may not happen in one shot this is also kind of you know kind of green day you can see that uh, it's got cut off let me just go to the um, let me directly go to the tcs and see what exactly is happening there yeah we have a green day it's kind of a so it's a major support zone that we have here right um, we have we have been talking about this support zone since many times see how many number of times it has tested here one two three four it's the fifth time it is taking a support there and immediately just got somebody you know investors are buying it and then uh, the price moves up and forms some kind of hammer pattern but remember that the moment is in the sideways zones and uh, there is also a bullish divergence that is possible 
which could take it back to the trendline channel so that was that is a clear retest of the support levels that you have seen there on the TCS what else we have as you see bang is a green day and uh, just but remember it had slipped the moment with the various ones and is trying to manage to come back right from back to the above RSI support levels remember this support zone from where it had gap down was a major major area of support now the question is uh, you know right now where it is also is the support of a breakout of the ascending triangle pattern which happened several months before and will it hold that area is a question now but momentum seems you know has to remain and you know uh, stabilize itself in the sideways zone before we can say anything on this right so right now it's a sideways it, it, it is neither sideways nor bearish kind of situation in the ICIC bank all the banks have been come so but look at this Kodak bank is showing greenery for the second day and, and remember it is at a support zone just like TCS this zone where the Kodak bank has been hovering around is a very 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 strong support zone and it's not ready to give up for that no matter what happens in the index or whatever right and Kodak bank is going to hover around the sideways zones for at this area for bit no between these two previous resistance and this for a very very long time looks like so sideways moment in the Kodak bank so overall, if you look, there is no, no the promise. The, the potential up moves can make could be anticipated on the IT index because of the dollar up move. But otherwise, it's all a pullback and correction that's happening or trying to hang on, you know, on the side which instead of getting into the bearish momentum zones is what's happening on all the major heavy indices. Now, sectoral performance, if you see, it was down day except for IT, which is, which is kind of flat. You know, the, you know, sector wise, if you see, it was probably points or five up. But there was some greenery that was in the major IT stocks. Right? So otherwise, um, all sectors uh, were down. 0.2 percent down metal, or 0.33 percent down pharma. 0.28 percent down from FMCG, 1.5 percent down reality, 1.3 percent down. So the sectors that are sideways is is auto and FMCG. Otherwise, all the other sectors are the bearish and the short term. So sectoral top-down approach of picking the stocks from the smaller sector is not possible right now. Stay away from. And then the momentum catches up to the bullish zones once again. Institutional, institutional participation data, if you see, does not come in for FIS, uh, NDS, you know, how much they bought and sold, you don't know as of today, but definitely it must have been a very good uh, you know, balance of uh, selling and buying that might have happened today also from between the FI and DI. FIS definitely might have sold. Look at the amount that has sold last last friday 5500 crores in the cash market and the entire week and entire month and financial year in 2021 it has been fi selling 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 nothing but selling right which is a growing concern and you know nothing can be done but uh fi's are increasing their buying questions 2000 right they're buying the dips yes 3000 crores yesterday so today's information has not come in and just refresh and see whether it has come in or not yes it has come in so we have 3000 361 crores of selling and an equal amount of buying happened from the FIS. So, big selling by FIS, big buying by the FIS, by the DIS. That's exactly what happened today. So, institutional selling, there is a FIBA war result is happening. You know, FIS continuously sell and equal amount of buying is what the attempt of the DIS. You know, that's holding the market. And today also, if that is what had the market. You know, you we never know when that stops. The moment that stops, you know, market could crash. So that's why you saw the spike in uh, uh, HDFC. That means there was a buying HDFC and Infosys just beat and down. This is really pulled the market up, right? None of the you know, it was you know, stock specific buys that is happening. Now moving on, dollar dollar index is spiking up to you no know, five year all time high level at on or not three or not four like that. It is going up, and look at look at the USD and our currency pair move that has happened. No action from the central bank has happened. Because of you know, obvious monetary policy and you know, uh, money management by the RBI, I'm not sure on the fundamentals of that. But look at this. You know, normally, that the, the used to uh, have some kind of intervention when you know, the market spikes and hits at this level and then traces back. You can see that same thing happened earlier. But look at this: seventy-seven point four five is what one dollar cost in rupee. So rupee weakened to the extreme, right? Seventy-seven point four five. Right, and God knows where it is. You know when it is going to hit the 80 you no know, 80 rupees you no know, historic all time high you no know, 80 rupees for one one dollar for purchasing we need 80 rupees right so 
so it stocks make might, might be making a lot of money right until this cools off a lot of money can, may reflect in the balance sheet so otherwise you know it's not good for the economy to have a weakened currency of the country right look at this so this is the primary culprit you no know, as we talk every day you know uh, the, the the major support from of the dow jones the major index is lost and is struggling to climb back there although you know it's not ready to fall either it's kind of making a base just below that new base but you know, it is not ready to go to the 32000 level of the dow jones so that's exactly the reason why our markets are also jittery right nasdaq look at this the momentum is still managed to be in the sideways in dow jones but look at nasdaq it has slipped into the peer zones in the momentum and the, it is it is almost given up you know the latest candle showing that it is just below the major support zone and it has breached that and as in we find also breached the support now the next one is close by whether it will hold the support or not we don't know but momentum is clearly in the bear zones trend is in the bear zone so overall bearish is in the us market we cannot ignore that our markets are not performing just because of that crude oil right some call of has happened today but uh, you remember that it was trying to, the momentum was trying to climb up into the bullish zones it got hit and then it uh, taken uh, resistance and then it just fallen down today some call of some crude oil uh, price has come down but remember that it's at a we you know it's at a 106 point kind of you know, uh, uh, kind of price level and you know it's at very high levels until it cools down but it is still below 100 no there is no receipt for uh, you know you know for oil consuming countries like ours now the only thing is that the gold if you see that it is not able to climb up despite the fact that the market is falling and the, and the gold is uh, resisting and it's in the bear zones and then but there is a bullish divergence that is possible that it is that showing that it is possible that the the the, the fall in the gold after the two attempts to climb up is done with and it may be attempted to consolidate once again there it could be possible because momentum divergence is showing that bullish divergence can be seen there right so gold is not spiking up despite the market you know like the collection is giving some hope that this may not be a, this, this may just not be a crash it may be just another correction right but the the crude oil price and uh, weakened dollar and the us markets turning clear bearish you no know, we cannot ignore that that's exactly the reason why your market is falling hdfc asset management is a short call hdfc asset management company is short call because of the fact that it has lost breached you know a medium uh, a major major support zone and it could give good swing or you know swing uh, trades on the short side the momentum also in the medium term also is bearish uh, but to put tight stop losses because there is a bullish divergence that could work out right so you have to be careful so the neckline from where it breached would be the uh, would be the place where you have to put the stop losses but you know uh, the candle on top of that so basically the entry has to be done on a shorter time frame right and uh, breach has already happened so it is given the signal of bearishness right and, um, so stop loss you know already we talked about so it's still just bad the second one is apollo hospital just you know it's on the weekly time frames but um, what you see here is uh, head and shoulder pattern head and shoulder patterns on weekly works well and it is already breached the signal is ready moment is bearish trend is in the bearish patterns is bearish so clear short signal uh, already arrived for apollo hospitals and hdfc asset management wrap a moderate bearishness for the short term for tomorrow right this is my view and that's based on all these parameters that we have analyzed the momentum bearish and the falling uh, trend and bonding demand sideways uh, downside expansion start pattern support resistance and all of this gives clear indication that it's, you know it's bearishness all around and uh, the fear is that it could fall further to make a new swing low we've already seen that right? so the consolidation has suddenly turned out to be uh, bearish after the rbi announcement surprise announcement ahead of the june and also the you know, uh, you know multiple factors that we talked about are you know us fed interest rate and indian fed rate combined and then inflation there or you no know, all-time high inflation if i has continued to be selling crude high weak rupee and you know so on top of that you have the global queues of the war also still happening you know any any overnight even could uh, make the market crash so keep a watch of 17500 and 37500 on the upside above that 18350 and 39400 only then any 
price moves above that only will indicate the rally continuation. Downside 5932,000 is what you have to look for in the indices, right? So, you know, any breach of that, a new swing low is made, then we have to be very, very careful because that could uh, that could uh, extend the correction further down and the you know, markets could turn into clear bearishness on the medium term as well. So, we have to be very cautious. World at least 22 means, you know, it's it's dangerous on stay away if you're not a professional trader and, uh, you know, cut short, hedge your positions if you're a long-term investment with option strategies or gold or any other mediums and stay away, you know, stay away is the best option even this week, spikes like this and if you're taking positions, cut short your positions, position size such a way that you take half of what you used to take earlier until the week cools off, right? So option strategies like calendar spreads, vertical spreads and uh, non-direction other strategies all can be used where the risk has to be defined. You know what exactly you lose if you get up in the morning next or night, what moves, whatever moves happens. So you should know what you will lose. You should still have the capital left for you to play the game again. So that's a key thing. So that's uh, summary wrap up. I have a bearish view. Moderate on the short term. Right for tomorrow I have a bearish view. Um, probably you know because of heavy fall that has happened there may be some you know some kind of consolidation that can be there you know it's possible after huge corrections there will always be consolidations but eventually it may be getting towards making it swing low is what my view be. it could go wrong you may disagree with your view you no know, but what i have done is based on all the parameters that i have studied and my understanding so you may have a better understanding from the study same studies and you could form your own view it's up to you right so hope if that helps you in some way in frame, you know framing your trade plan for the next day and then uh, you no know, uh, framing your own you know, um, market view for the next day then consider hitting the like button and share and subscribe if you're not done it yet and share it to your friends we have very few subscriptions appreciate to help in this regard thanks a lot happy trading happy learning bye